a lot of talk that maybe they didn't go there because of anomalies and pictures. Many of the pictures were faked because the pictures that the astronauts took, there was stuff all over the place. They couldn't hide it. Yes, they did go. But yes, there's been a manipulation of other things put in there that supposedly looks like our astronauts. So, you know, we have to use common sense when we look at these things. The next slide, please. Did our astronauts see things? Absolutely. <laughs> Moirne has told me that the United States government, just our government, has at least 53 of its own UFOs, flying saucers, that are stationed on the moon, on the far side. Now I'm going to show you where he says they are. It's in one of the slides. They did, but they were told to shut up, not say anything. Um, many astronomers who have been taking a look at the moon, many of the lunar rovers and the cars that they drove have disappeared. They're no longer there. You know, well, they just didn't get up and float away. Okay, the moon has got gravity. Especially on the far side, it's got gravity. Moirne has told me that if you take Copernicus Crater and you stood at the bottom, that the gravity is equal to that of Chicago. As if you were standing in Chicago. Because again, it is not the rotation. It is apparently the sunlight. The sun's radiation that creates gravity. This is just what they say. Now, our moon does not turn on its axis. It rotates around the Earth, but we primarily just see one side, or only 59% of it. <clears throat> By the way, our moon's the only one that does that. You know, it's the only one. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, this was um, taken out of National Geographic. This was in the early 1950s. This was NASA's idea of what moon bases would look like. They, in fact, did do this and create this in February of 1958. So when Kennedy said, you know, we are going to send man to the moon, part of our government, primarily the NSA, was already there. They were already there. Now, folks, you don't hear much about the Russian space program, but let me tell you something. They are a major player, and they are also here. And they don't work for us, neither does the NSA. They work for international bankers who are the new priesthoods for extraterrestrials. And we're going to cover that. Next slide, please. Okay. According to the Andromedans, there were primarily nine huge domed cities on the moon. The front and the back. They housed up to five million extraterrestrials at one time. There was water, there was vegetation, there was everything they needed. Okay, and these covered hundreds of miles. You know, so when Richard shows you the pictures of the things, you know, the shards, so many miles tall, 9, 10, 15 miles, whatever it is, he's right. He's absolutely right. You know, but there's more. There's more. Okay, next slide. Okay. This is along the equator on the far side of the moon. This is what's left of a pyramid. There are four pyramids on the moon. Excuse me. Okay, now I can assure you that the pharaohs, just to practice, did not take the Hebrew or the ivory up here, build one, then bring it back and do it right in Egypt. Didn't happen. According to the Andromedans, almost all the planets in our solar system have pyramids on it. Some have more. I've asked why. Some people say they're tombs. The Andromedan perspective is that these are weights. And what they do is you put them in a strategic location, it balances the rotation of the planet. It doesn't keep it from wobbling, which means that if the ETs are there colonizing, there's no major fluctuations in weather and gravity. Gravity anomalies as well as the electromagnetic field, which is around every single planet. It has to be balanced. That's what these are for. That's why Giza is directly dead center of the landmass on planet Earth. Next slide, please. Okay, can we just focus this a little tiny bit? Okay, folks, I want you to focus on this area right here. I want you to focus on this structure in here. For those of you who are architects, <clears throat> please feel free to, you know, say something about this. This area right here, 
You can see the curves, the angles. There's another bridge here. I want you to notice these lit up objects inside the bottom of the crater. We've got a close-up of it. Next slide, please. Here we go. Okay, here's another bridge. Apparently, this is inhabited by extraterrestrials from Orion. These are, I'm told, are domes. Does everybody see this? Okay. I'm also told that this is a road that goes into here. There's an elevator that goes up to this area here. And when they land, they take an elevator or something down, and then they, they can walk because there's atmosphere on the far side of the moon, which is why the astronauts took pictures of clouds. You know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, the snow job that we've been given. It's nothing what we've been told it is. Nothing. Right. Next slide, please. Okay, I want you to focus on this. Let me just turn off one. Um, I want you to focus on this area right here. Now, I realize this might be difficult, but I do have a close-up. This is, this is a crater, and there is a structure that comes across it. You can see the sun coming through this way. You can see it shining right here underneath. And you can see this is still in the shade. This structure here. This is a 21 mile long bridge. Next slide please. Here. I'm always updating. I'm always trying to get clearer pictures. This is 21 miles. Now you might have to, you may not see it. You may have to adjust your eyes. Um, I know this isn't easy, but this is it right here. Okay, you can see the sun shining through here. <coughs> now we didn't build this. And how is it that our astronauts missed this? 21 miles. That's from here to almost to Boulder. Next slide. Okay. Look at this. Just sitting there parked. This was taken by the Lunar Orbiter in 1966. Next slide. Now, isn't it interesting that we're told that the craters were created by meteorite impact, impact or incessant meteorite bombardment? I just love that. Okay? And yet, you have full-fledged mountains in the dead center of these craters. Many of them are even higher than the crater walls. Folks, that's just not possible. It is not possible. You have craters that are 30 to 40 miles in diameter. The deepest one is only 7,000 feet. That is also an absolute impossibility. Richard talks about his dome structures, okay, that had some kind of a glass on it. Right here. I believe, and I'm told that this is what's left of one of Richard's domes that he has a picture of, him, you know, with the long shards and the pieces hanging off. This is what's left of it. As you can see, there's a shiny spot of the glass tickered in, but that's what this is right here. <coughs> this apparently also was a dome city, but it was destroyed by particle beam weapons between what we now know as the Orion Group and a group from the Pleiades. This happened approximately 9,600 years ago. Full out war here. Next slide, please. Okay, I want you to just check out this area here. All these structures, look at these. <coughs> Apparently these are hangars. This is a complex that is inhabited by human beings from Earth. Also want you to look at this object. I, I'm trying to get a better picture of what this large structure is. But what's really interesting about this area here and this is look at nice how sharp this crater is. The corners here. Very nice and sharp. 